Welcome to the Mystical Motherhood Podcast. This is Chelsea, and I want you to create a happy family. I use my background in Western and Eastern medicine, birth, and ancient yogic practices to help the modern mother learn how to live a healthier life and create conscious children. This is your guide to fertility, conception, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and the early childhood years. Are you ready to live the life of your dreams? Welcome back to Mystical Motherhood's episode number 31, which is all about hormonal health and how to find internal balance um, so it reflects in the outside world. We have guest Nicole with us today, and she is a registered nurse, women's health specialist, and a therapist for hormonal health. She works with women privately and in group sessions to help educate about endocrinology, about um, the right diet, nutrition, psychology, and meditation practice in order to find the best solutions for their body and to balance out their hormones um, when getting off the birth control pill, when dealing with infertility, and just issues around PCOS or different feminine issues. I hope you enjoy. Write into mysticalmotherhood.com with any questions, and please subscribe. Thank you. So tell me how you got into, uh, tell me what, what you do or how you got into hormones. And it's, it's really interesting. So I know it's like one of the biggest issues that I see with the women I work with, at least before they get pregnant. Do you ever see women that are working with infertility issues or anything like that? Or who do you normally see? Right. So I see, yeah, I see people who are having a heart, either, um, thinking about getting pregnant and they just all of a sudden like, okay, I have this like feminine body. So what's going on? And they just want to like get to know their body, you know, Mm -hmm. and they also have like PMS and or wanting to get off the pill in that sense. Mm -hmm. So that's like one category, another category. And that also includes like people who have like PCOS and they're like, I want to get pregnant though. Right. And it's, it's like that type of thing. And then it's also, um, ladies who are having a challenge of getting pregnant, you know, so that's like, it's like they've already tried. It's not that I have PCOS, but I haven't tried yet, but I know it could be a challenge or I'm on the pill and I want to get off. So like, you know, so it's a different narrative. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Can you tell me just from the beginning? So people, when they're listening, how can they find you? And then we'll say it again at the end, but what's your website? And then just so we can start with that. Sure. It's nicolohepshalom.com. Okay, perfect. And I'd love to like, for me, I mean, I, I'm, I did, I'm like a Western practitioner, but I'd love to hear, like, if we take like all of those cases are just as important as like, there's no one that like PCOS, just as many women have that as infertility is all, you know? So yeah. if we could take like at least three of them and say like, so let's say somebody comes with, to you with PCOS, what do you do? And what can women do at home and how can they not panic? Because everyone I work with, their doctor doesn't know what to do with it. Right. And I, I use diet or et cetera, at least I give them some books that'll tell them that's a little bit more of what to do, but what do you work? Give me some examples so that people could take things home. Sure. So let me backtrack first and just kind of say my trainings. So then it shows like how I bring things together and this will make more sense. So I started as a nurse in an infertility center and I worked, uh, so I have that experience of, um, you know, like how the body works, <laughs> how the medical system works, what are the pitfalls, like what are the, what's the, what's the, ner- the training that the nurses have, you know, in general or the doctors have and what they don't have. Like a lot of doctors don't have enough training about how nutrition affects the body yeah. or how lifestyle affects the body and to see the links between those. Um, and I also know that there's not that now there's becoming more research of the woman's body in the Western world, but it, there wasn't, you know, we don't really understand how the woman's body works. So, um, so I have that background. I started there and when I was working at the doctor's office, I was always interested in more of an Eastern kind of uh, philosophy. It always made more sense to me. So I started training in like um, in like food therapy and in, you know in that sense, not 
So I, and also yoga. So the doctors allowed me, which was really awesome of them. That's pretty progressive of them to bring that into the center. Where was the center located? It's in New York city. It's closed now, but it was in New York city. And so I had a chance to like chit chat and help ladies in New York city with a very stressful, fast paced life to add nutrition to their life, like proper nutrition for fertility and yoga Um, And just like a place for them to talk, you know, which is really, I I think, a big deal for girls, you know, dealing with so much stress and in in like not just with friends, but with like in the infertility center, you know, to talk. I think it's really great. So I started there. I did my own thing after that. Um, And then I went into I really love psychology, even nursing school. My my practicum was in psychology. So, um, and I thought working with ladies was like, uh, I needed that, you know, you know, that I wanted training in that. So I went into, um, back to school for psychology. And so now what I do is, is I integrate all of it. So I integrate one sec. I integrate the, the endocrinology education, nutrition, and, um, sorry, I'm just putting headphones. Okay, nutrition and um, and psycho. Wait, so psychology, endocrinology, education, yoga, meditation, and nutrition. So we integrate all of that into the practice. So when I do work with ladies, there is a a very simple um, protocol that I use, okay. and obviously it's all customized. But you know, we work with like um, first relaxation because hormones are. It, when cortisol's up, and for most of us in this world, cortisol's pretty high. And so, like, you want to first tackle that. So we work a lot with just, like, how to relax, you know, and how to make it, how just to get the woman's body to relax, where you know, and to relate to the woman's body. How could you relate to your body? Right. You know, like, when stress comes, it first hits the ovaries, mm-hmm. right? Because we want to protect. And then it goes to the pituitary. It communicates with the pituitary. Mm-hmm. So... How can we just relate? How could you wake up and just massage your ovaries and start talking to your body? And yeah, that's in my book, the massaging of the ovaries and the the relaxation. Mm-hmm. Even not even wearing tight pants, especially if you're trying to get like fertile. Is how do, can you relax that whole region? I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's yeah. like, well, if you're constantly putting our bodies in these really tight jeans, and then that kind of energy is like, when is the last time we didn't wear that? Like just a relaxing skirt, you know? Right. Right. So, it, yeah, it's that it's something that we don't talk about, but when you hear it intuitively, you're like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Like, you know, we need to take care of that region. Like, it's so sensitive. It's the first place we, stress hits. And even, you know, uh, progesterone and cortisol, right? Like, when they are, when cortisol is high, they're, the receptors, the, the place that, yeah, the res- I'm losing my words, but the place that, um, the receptors of but, the cell. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So like when it, cortisol goes high, it's the same spot. So when cortisol increases, it takes over the place of where progesterone could, the levels could increase, mm-hmm. right? So so then like, and it makes sense because you have to survive before you can reproduce. So your body wants to first be alive before it makes another life. So that's like, you know, you have to take care of that region first, Mm-hmm. Uh, before anything. So it, it makes sense in different levels. Mm-hmm. Um, so we kind of work first of like how to relax, how to get the adrenal glands to just relax, how to understand. It's really interesting. Like a lot of ladies don't know that we have different, we know that we have different stages because the body changes and we're sensitive to our body, but we don't really know what's going on. We don't know that there is a follicular stage. So even yesterday I had a lady that I worked with, it was our first session and she's like, wait, what is the name of the stages of our hormones? And I was like, okay, let's like first kind of go into, you know, what are the different stages and what's going on? So it's really important for us to like get empowered about our body. So we go into that, then we go into like sugar balancing. It's really practical when I work with ladies. We go into the sugar balancing and the liver detox and so you do relaxation and then looking at diet, probably some of the most pro- you know problematic parts of diet, yeah. sugar. So is it like a reduction of sugar? So it's a it's a reduction of sugar, but I don't like to look at it that way. It's more of like what can we add? 
right? Because we're working with women again. So it doesn't, so it's more of like adding pleasure, adding things that fit with the lifestyle, you know, yeah, and adding not acting like we nutrition. have to take this away and then they're naturally going to replace it with something different. Okay. Right. Because you want the body to feel good and we're sensitive. Yeah. Right. You want it to be easy. So women work really well when, the, or feel empowered when they're in their pleasure. That's so true. you want to enhance, true. you want to enhance that. You know, that's, it's very centering and, yeah, and it's very, it's very mm-hmm. sensual too. Like, the it's, word, I mean, it's or like, you know, if you're always in your, it's embodying. Yeah. It's, it's embodying. very embodying yeah. because then you can like hear your intuition better when you're in your pleasure. And I don't mean like in a, I mean, like, you know what you want, you yeah. know, you're giving yourself the chance to like this morning, like, uh, it was so censoring. I was like putting my face cream, like just cream on and it has this smell to it. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> like, you know, and then I just felt relaxed and I was like, ah, oh, I can hear myself better, you know? And I was like, that's cool. You know, it just happened like a few minutes ago before we got on this call. So like, you know, it stays with me. Yeah. Right. It's really centering. It's really calming. And I just hear myself better. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I like that type of framework a lot more than reducing. Obviously I'm like, okay, well, we got to cut this out. Like, you know, this, and this is why. Well, with certain things like PCOS, there's, you know, or you have an issue with diabetes, you have to cut things out. Right. So it's not, but it's what you're highlighting. So when I'm in discussion with ladies, so it's like, Okay, so like how first let's work of like what feels good, you know, let's learn about who you are. A lot of girls they're just doing, which is kind of part of that framework of um like reducing things, taking things out is the same kind of like linear framework or you know, versus like, okay, so like why don't you if we stay with the cream kind of example, why don't you go into a store and have fun and smell different creams and touch them and feel them and see what you like. So a lot of girls don't know themselves and like what they like and what they don't like. Yeah. You know, that's so true. So it's like, let's, let's go there and highlight that and have fun and get to know yourself. And while we're doing that, we're kind of sneaking in of like, okay, like in the morning, you know, or before you go to bed, don't have sugar because that's going to mess up the whole car- like rhythm of your cortisol. You're going to wake up with like this, you know, your hormones being so imbalanced and, you know, so let's kind of, you know, we're reducing that, but we're highlighting the other stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the framework that I have more fun working with. And like, it's easier for people to stick through because it's hard, like changing your sh- Teaching sugar out of your diet, it's like, it's one of the hardest things. It's, or coffee. it's like smoking cigarettes. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Or, it's, or, you know, research says it's just like stopping taking cocaine. It's the same thing that the body goes through. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's hard. So it's fun to add. It's just, you want to have more fun with it. Yeah. So, so then anything uh, else, do you put them, is there any herbs or, I mean, is every single set different for each page, you know, like any herbs, could, could you give us an example of what you would do after that, like change their supplements or herbs? Yeah. You know, that's, that also is included because, it, and it's all, it's all customized um, because each person needs different things, you know, like their minerals, the, the vitamins and stuff. I do use herbs, but I don't use, I'm not focused on it. I know that's like the hot thing right now to use all these. Or the ancient things, but I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I know some herbs. I'm just curious. So, I, I don't know them that well. So I would love to know if you knew them, but so let's, let's take an example. Like, let's say, or give me a few examples. Like if somebody comes in for infertility or PCOS or something, or one of these things, so it's, it's like they're listening. What could they do at right. home? Okay. So like, it's hard to answer. So customized. And I don't want to, f- I, don't want to feed them. So just weird. make this is yeah, so, but not I could for you, just say, but it's for general, right? I, but I could say that like, you know, if I work with someone and they're stressed out, I'm going to give them vitamin C, right? Because vitamin C gets really stripped when you're stressed and you need it, you know, for, uh, to build the hormones in different ways and stuff. I would more likely like if, you know, right now say like, you know, if, for women, I think fat, you know, f- I would focus more on food because that's easier to generalize than vitamins or herbs. Okay. Uh, you know, but like, you know, um, I think fat is a good place to like start. Okay. Um, you know, like good fats. So like coconut oil or coconut butter and olive oil, those to have more omega-3 than omega-6 
is a really important place. So fats are where our hormones is the building block of our hormones. Okay. Right? So if you want to have like uh, efficient hormones, w- w- efficient hormone levels and to have them work properly, you need to have fat because that's where they come from. So right, but not <laughs> the kind of trans fat. So would you tell right. us like, I'm all about so, trans fats too. Tell us like about trans fats so, and how people get off of them. So it's just to understand, I, I think with people, at least, you know, I live in San Francisco, so everyone's very in their head. So I like to give as much information. So, um, so I, I think it's to understand the science very simply of like, so we have omega-3 and omega-6, right? And back a long time ago in our ancestors, it used to be like about a one to, the ratio was one to one, right? And omega-3 is what we want. Those are the healthy fats, now it's like 1 to 15, 1 to 20, and the 15, 20 is omega-6. So those are like not good fats. <laughs> so there's a, so that's one of the reasons that our hormones, a lot of my clients, they have like all these, you know, high excessive estrogen, which is mostly what I see, a lot of what I see like women for is the high estrogen um, or, you know, just these, if they just, a lot of them, when they just change the way that they eat their fats, and their, how much they're eating. A lot of them need more fat because of our culture. We think we need less fat. Then the hormones are balanced out. So I think really starting in every meal to start being much more conscious of adding more omega-3 fats makes a huge difference, a really huge difference. So what uh, did that, how much would that look like in every meal? And give, can you give some examples like 30%. of 30%. What... So 30%, right. so like... Have a plate. So if you have a plate in front of you, okay. you want okay. to have like like a like thirty percent of the meal to be a fat, like an avocado, right? Olives would be you know you can add some olives in there, um, and a lot of our food has fat, like flaxseed and all these seeds, and they have fat in it, right? So it's just to like be conscious of that, and um, you know sprinkle some olive oils have some coconut butter in there or, or, or like coconut oil. Um, it's just it's to start becoming meal. more. Okay. Fun. That's, I like Yeah. That. With every meal. What do you think about this coffee thing where you put the, the, um, scoop of the butter and the scoop of the coconut oil in the coffee? What do you think about how caffeine? And- it depends on the person and what they're going through at that time. You know, like, I, I think caffeine really could mess up with your cortisol, but it depends on what it just depends on the woman. It depends on the woman, but I think in general, if you're like, okay, my hormones are really off. So for that time being, just I think it's important to stay off some caffeine and have some matcha instead, which does have caffeine, but it doesn't harm it doesn't dysregulate you as much. Okay. Um you know, but then there are these coffees, which I haven't researched as much, but there are these type of coffees that it's, they say, and I haven't read the research, but they say it doesn't like, um, increase, like just dysregulate the hormones as much, but I haven't looked into those. I haven't looked into the research. It's just kind of a lot of people talking. So. And then back to the, when you said you have a lot of clients that come to you with high estrogen levels. Why yeah. do you think that's happening other than the fats? Like, is, is there anything you know of why that's happening? And then, and can you give us an example of like one client <laughs> that came to you? Like, what did you do for her? Okay. Um, why it's happening. I think a lot of just stress. Okay. I, I think that's the number one thing is stress and the food that we're eating. So food and lifestyle is huge. Um, yeah, I think food and lifestyle is huge. I, and so let's see a story that you know it's usually the same pro, same protocol, but it's just and does it you know, work? Someone does the in, protocol work? Is it working for them? Yeah, the the protocol is working. I mean, in the beginning, we do the sugar level. Every most people have like a leaky gut, so we're healing that first. What you know, kind the of things would you give for a leaky gut? Well, we're helping with uh, just what type of things I would give. Yeah, like 
I've heard like celery juice would be really good for a leaky gut. Is there something, you know, like any like specific things you'd say, like, this is really good for a leaky gut to fix your, the gut. Is there any like secrets that you have? Okay. I always think it's interesting when people ask these questions because it's, uh, okay. Um, cause it's just kind of, it's hard to like generalize, you know, for each person, but for leaky gut, I get, I think the basics are really important to start there. Mm -hmm. So it's to really take in probiotics and prebiotics to have, you know, to really work on the gut lining. Um, uh, the, the thing just left my mind. I do have it right here, but I think one supplement, which is fantastic for any digestive issue. And let me get the, is glutamine. L-glutamine. L-glutamine. That one. Okay. I've yeah. Heard of that. I mean, the, so that repairs, it's a, like the most potent amino acid. So it repairs the gut lining and most of the digestive issues, like you want, that's one of the, um, that's just something that you have to fix. So I, that's a really great one to start incorporating into like it into your meals for 20, you can only have it for 28 days. So that's a great place to start while you're adding in the good bacteria. So it's not like just do that and that's it. You have to also add in good bacteria and start changing. Like if someone has like low acid that needs to be fixed first, low stomach acid or um, any like kind of other digestive things. So, but L-glutamine is a really important thing to start adding into the equation. And I just have so many different clients, how, how you approach things. So what about a female that comes to, which is a super common problem is they don't have a, like a, um, constant menstrual, like menstrual cycle. They can't get it the right amount of days. Either it's 40 or it's 20, you know, doesn't exist. So what would you do? I know, I know it's all different, but you do the same kind of protocol, but I mean, is there anything that you've done that you're like, this has been really successful for these women? I think it's first to, to start um, really basic for them to start understanding their menstrual cycle and start, you know, so to start charting it. That's been really huge for ladies, you know, because then the, once you start charting your menstrual cycle, even if it's irregular, you can still chart. Right. Yeah, and, and once you, you start relating, that's true. Right. And then you get connected to your body and the sensations and you're, it, you could just read yourself differently and relax your body. And then you could hear what you need to eat, what you need, what kind of lifestyle. So that's been really huge. And that's, um, and then also if you're irregular and you can't, or you're not having your period, you can still chart with the moon. And you do feel the sensations, so that's really huge. And it's re- and women want really are craving to have that into their life. Like I had a lady here the other day, and we just started, and she kept saying, and she didn't, she was making that, con- she didn't know that she wanted so much to connect to her body, and she came to that place herself of like, I just want to be able to know what I want or understand how I. She's like, I never understood how I feel. Versus like, because we made the distinction of, you know, PMS gives you all these emotional effects, but is that really like an emotion that you're actually feeling something in a way? The hormonal reaction versus knowing what you want and how you're feeling and getting that type of feedback, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there is something with like that stage that you are getting these emotions that are too, you know, during, right before you get your period that you're understanding uh, more of, because you're much more intuitive at that stage and you're understanding, because the brain hemispheres are coming together. They have a, they're, the right and left are kind of like talking more, much more clearly. So you're understanding more of like what you want or what pisses you off and you have to change and, you know, all that type of feedback. But then there's also a part of it of, it's just your hormones are kind of going out of whack and you're just, it, there's an imbalance. So, but, so a lot of ladies just kind of want to know of like, how could I be in more connection with myself so I can get that type of feedback. And that, that's really big when you're, you're not getting your period or it's just kind of, you're spotting a lot, you know, and you're not sure what's going on. So having that type of feedback is huge. Um, yeah. And it's a really great place to start because, 
we really, like how we started with our conversation in the beginning with the, um, the ovaries, it's really important to be in contact with your body. Right. That's everything. And do you, you find know, you if, they eat, chart it, if they wait, chart everything, oh, if they chart I just things- wanted to say, wait, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say that like, it's really important that you could eat all the food that you want that's healthy, but if you're not in contact with your body, if you're not absorbing things, then it doesn't mean anything. So be in contact with your body and having that relaxed because when you're in contact, you're embodied and you're relaxed. So then for it's easier for your body to absorb all the minerals and vitamins. So, okay. so that's, that's also another reason that it's number one. Okay. They to start. Go ahead. And then um, if, if the women are charting it out and they're looking at all their emotions and they're feeling, I mean, do you have them? Cause at, so First off, explain to everyone who's listening, what does it look yeah. to chart it out? So like if somebody's going to do this at home, maybe you have the moon cycle there, then you, you're saying bleeding how many days, if it's heavy, and would you put your emotions with that too? So you could see over time as you work through with, work with yourself and understand yourself, you can reduce these emotions and then you thus reduce the PMS um, symptoms. Okay. So there's two ways. Um, so if you're irregular and not having your period, you want to just start with the moon. So there had to be a time when you were regular, <laughs> right? Like in the beginning, maybe. Um, so you would ask yourself, did you, did you bleed closer to the new moon or the full moon? You know, a lot of people say, start with the, start charting with the new moon if you weren't, but I was always uh, like with the full moon. That's how my period was always like, I always bled on the full moon. Yeah. I always so, bleed on the new moon. So yeah. And most pe a lot of people do, but I never did. I was always the opposite. So I would, you know, so that means other people are the same. So I suggest like just kind of going back to how you used to be and start charting with that. And you would just, um, just, yeah, you, you'll start charting that way and start, you, I think it's really important to take your temperature in the morning, you know, so you would take your temperature and then that would progress to that. So from here, it would be like, uh, the charting would be the same for everybody. If you are regular or whatever you're going through, you would chart the same way. Sorry. So it would be, um, you would wake up and take your temperature. The first thing you would do. Uh -huh. right? And I think it's also a really great time besides the charting. If that's when you're going to check in with your body and set yourself up for the day, you know, just massage your ovaries and kind of say, okay, today, like I, I feel myself take a nice deep breath and just feel like your bed, like hitting, touching your body and holding you. You know, we, as women, we need that safe space. We need to feel that just being for a second and you know, so just feel your body and feel your, feel the safety of your bed holding you. It's really important and check in and set yourself up for the day. Say, okay, today I'm going to eat well. I'm going to nurture myself and that's self-love. I'm going to take care of myself today. I'm going to uplift myself in all situations, you know, and just feel that grace within yourself. Um, and then within that, you're going to first check in. How do you feel? You know, like really go in there. How do, how do you feel right now? You know, and you could chart that also. What are the thoughts that are coming up? You know, the, and you can chart that also. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you go to the bathroom, you can chart your cervical fluid and see like where you're at. Um, and then that sets your day. You're in touch. You're really in touch with yourself from that moment. Uh, and then you can progressively see like every day, how things are changing. Mm -hmm. And, and the change like really has a lot of teachings for us as women. That's amazing. And then what about for women? Um, thank you for sharing all that. It's super valuable for everyone. And then, well, I'll actually come to back to that to another episode because I want to do an episode on, you know, menstrual cycles and fertility, but with, with people getting off birth control, so that's always hectic and the, the acne that comes and the, and you know, like the fear and then the emotions and then the getting the period back or the menstrual cycle back to normal. How do you handle that? Cause people are, I feel like more and more like clients are like, I, I mean, what happens is they want to have a baby so they get off of it immediately. But sometimes it seems like yeah. more and more women are realizing, okay, this might not be good for me. Yeah. So what do you yeah. tell them? 
Um, tell women when they're coming off. Yeah. How do you help them get off birth control? Um, you know, surprisingly, the protocol is not that different Mm -hmm. from, you know, helping a lot of, a lot of it's gut stuff. You know, the gut is just like destroyed, um, from the hormones and doing like a really deep liver cleanse, uh, with different phases, you know, just because just to get the estrogen like moving out and getting all the hormones kind of, uh, moving out. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's pretty, it, and to learn how to eat right. So your body, um, usually when you're taking progesterone, like uh, sorry, the the pill, your body wasn't absorbing nutrients the right the same way of like someone not taking the pill. So we start trying to get a lot of these, uh, the body like uh, having the right vitamins and minerals, so it could then create the right hormone levels. And when you talk about the liver cleanse, what do you do for a liver cleanse? Like what would you, how would you, how would, how would somebody start a liver cleanse and why would you think that's super important for them? So the liver is affected by the, so that's why actually we start with the sugar, right? The sugar balancing because the, you know, insulin really affects the liver. So so it kind of starts in the beginning. But it sets the stage to then have a liver cleanse. So that's also important to say that sometimes you can't just like, especially with hormonal issues, you can't just like go into a liver cleanse. You need to start with having really good sugar, uh, blood level, sugar blood level balance, or also a good gut bacteria because you know you need to have that before you go into a liver cleanse. Um, and then in the liver cleanse, there's. So it's really important because sometimes estrogen gets, uh, due to like the hormonal levels and the effects, sometimes estrogen comes back, you know, recirculates um, instead of being expelled out. And that's why a lot of ladies have estrogen dominance because this, the estrogen isn't coming out of the body. Oh, so by getting the liver clean, by getting the gut clean, everything comes out. Okay. Right. Makes exactly. Sense, right? Right. So Listen, that's for everyone uh, to... Think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's super important to to have this liver cleanse, and um, and also like I want to say that a, a lot of times it's because of the external kind of products that we're using that that's why it's hard for the liver to cleanse out sometimes. You know, because the because these. So if you're using plastic, it has the xenoestrogens, right? So when it comes into your body, your body is reading it as estrogen, but it's not. It's a xenoestrogen, so you have estrogen excess. And then your liver is so clogged up with these so-called estrogens or, you know, that it becomes toxic itself, and it's harder for it to expel the estrogen out. So there's different reasons that your liver is kind of getting clogged up and toxic, but if you're estrogen dominant, which a lot of ladies are, your your liver definitely has to be cleaned out. Um, and if you're on the birth control, obviously your body has been has these like something that is mimicking right hormones, right. so it needs to be cleaned out. Um, so the way to start is there are herbs to take, um, and usually so. Leafy green vegetables are a great place to start. To have a really clean diet is a really important place to start. Um, Leafy green vegetables are really great. And there are some, uh, like, two uh, herbs to take, dim. And I I call it dim. It's a really hard word to say. (laughs) And um, so dim and... SG. You could just C? email it to me, and then I can put it yeah. in the notes. Yeah, we'll put it in the notes. It's and those are two great herbs to have um, because they're. We you can't eat enough green leafy vegetables or broccoli or these vegetables to actually clean your system out. So it's important to have something to help it out. You know, or milk thistle is really great. Okay. Um, so there are some great herbs to have to help you out. Okay. And this, yeah. I want to, I want to ask more about the, I know it's back to the beginning, but I want to switch back and ask questions about how you helped clients at the infertility clinic. But before that, is there anything you want to end with about like health of your general clients now? 
of them now. Yeah, I'm just like, is there um, anything else you want to add? Because I want to ask a question about the beginning of your life when you were working as at the infertility clinic and how you handled the women's stress there. Okay. Um, no, I don't have anything else to add. Okay. okay. So yeah. when you were at the infertility, because there's so many women that are struggling with infertility and then they go to an infertility clinic and they get completely overwhelmed. What can you tell these women? You know what? I'm going to backtrack for a second. Sorry. There is something I want to add. Okay. If you do work with a healthcare pr- practitioner that's helping with your hormonal health, I think it's really important that uh, w- that they help you through the process of learning how to um, – clean your, to how to balance your hormones, but they're teaching in a way that after you work with them, that you could do it yourself. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think that's really important because as women, our body's always changing. Our hormones are always changing. You're always going to have stress. So there's something that's always going to be imbalanced. So you have to learn how to take care of you. So I think that's when you're looking for someone, you have to find someone that's there to be your educator. So you can be your own healer. I think that's super important. So anyway, so we'll go back to um, your question. So how to help? How I help people in New so York with stress? So a lot of my clients are going to infertility clinics, or they're going for hormonal right. support at infertility clinics, or they're they're worried about they get so stressed out when they're there. Um, how can they handle the stress of going through that kind of like, I mean, when they're on Clomid, the weight gain and the stress and the, what can they do if they choose to do the, you know, the route of getting pregnant through this, this medical system like that, or they have to go to a, you know, a clinic like this. Um, I think to have support is number one. You need support. Every woman really needs like online groups that you would recommend or anything. I don't know of any, actually. I don't know of any online groups. Um, But you just need, like, just to have a partner, family member, friends that you could call up, that you can bond with, you know, just to have someone handy on phone. You the way that the woman's hormone system works is we relax when we connect. So, Mm -hmm. you know, when we bond, our whole nervous system relaxes. So we really need to have people that we could, even just to know that you you could call someone will relax the system. Mm, Okay. There's that knowingness. So I think that support is always number one. Um, And also to have fun, laugh with your friends, you know, find time for yourself to relax. Uh, that's really important through all the stress. It's they're afraid to tell people that they're having problems with infertility because that's a huge, huge thing I see with a lot of women is they're just, they're so embarrassed because everyone, that that's one of the biggest fears I hear. Everyone around me is getting pregnant and I'm not. Yeah. And so... Um, First of all, that's not true. No one's talking about it, as you're saying. No one's yeah, just no talking one's about talking that. about it. So, yeah. what would you tell them? Like, it's not true, or you've got to reach out for support, or what? What? Well, support doesn't always have to be your friends. You know, if you do have a partner, it could be your partner. But support doesn't always have to be your friends. It could also be a professional, uh, someone professional as well. Um, but I still. Uh, no matter, like, try any way to have someone there for you. You know, that, like, there's, n- I don't want to, like, say, like, to have an excuse of not to. I think no matter what, you have to have someone supporting you. You cannot go through it at all, alone. It's the hardest thing for women to go through, and it, and to do it alone is, you can't. You have to have somebody to support you. Yeah, okay. You know, like, women need, they call in a... Uh, in Kundalini, they call it peanut hour, you know, and that's when all the emotions come out and you just talk and talk and talk. And I think that's super important. You need someone to just get all of it out. Us women need to talk mm-hmm. um, and we need to bond. Mm-hmm. So find any way possible to have the right, take care of yourself that you could have the right person for you. And it has to be a safe, and number one, it has to be safe. Don't just, because it's also a time that we're like, well, I just need someone. And there's this sense of that little girl or that, des- like a sense of desperation in a way, lack of a better word, that comes up. So you just kind of, uh, it's easy for a person to just find someone, but it has to feel safe. You know, your body, you're, you're, you want to give birth. So you, 
you are the person that creates that needs to create a safe space. So that's also really important. Find ways that you feel safe, you know, and that's why I bring up pleasure as well. It's like have fun because when you're having fun, you in a healthy way, you're, you're feeling safe, you know, so it's a good time to learn about yourself and to create safe spaces, maybe take an art class or whatever feels good for you, safe for your body. So really it's a good time to learn how to feel safe in your body, how to do things that make you feel really good, relaxed and safe and, um, and to have the support that you need. So it could, it's a, so also to like learn how to relax, you know, it doesn't have to be like going to meditation class, but just to take little, like even to nap for a few minutes every day is like a really important thing to do because you're teaching yourself how to relax and how to feel safe. Okay. And then where do you want to take this in the future? Like I, out of curiosity, are you, what, what's your plans for your business and sure. Yeah, so um, I'm doing a couple of things right now. So my the protocol that I use, I'm actually making, it's almost done, I'm making like an online component so women can just do it on their own. Mm-hmm. So I'll have all the, all the education, I'll have um, some psychological kind of questions that you could do to process like what it means to be a woman um, and all that. And uh, it has some herbs in it and it has the foods to eat to help with each of the processes. And so there's three programs. There's that, there's a preconception program that will go over in detail the liver cleanse for before you go in conception, because uh, you really need to clean out the liver before you, uh, or you need like around three to six months. Some people say one year before you get pregnant to start planning and to really clean your body, get your body really ready. True. To get your body ready, and then also there's a lot of psychological. There's a psychological component of what does it mean to actually be a mother, you know, and to because there's a lot of like what society tells us, and now we're changing the concept of what it means to be a woman. So there's a component of that, and about the relationship with your partner and how you want to connect in that. Um, and then there's another program that is. For um, and I think actually now talking to you is really good after you come off of birth control, but it has like elimination kind of diet and for the menstrual, it's a three thirty day, um, about a thirty day cleanse of doing the elimination diet because that works in an interesting way with the menstrual cycle of how the hormones are working with adding the right nutrients, um, so. There's that's like a kind of fun way to experiment yeah. eating and understanding and I'd love you your to body. write this all up in the bio if you want to list like exactly the things sure. that you do that people could find you for would be yes. really great. Yeah. So that's kind of that's the the next step um, of it. Great. Wonderful. And then what what's your um, again what is your website so everyone can find you? So it's nicolehepshalom.com. It's n i c o l e O H E B S H A L O M, like mom, dot com. Okay, awesome. And that'll be in the bio. Anything else before we go that you want to add or? Mm. You're good? Um, I think it makes a big difference for hormones, just a very practical place to start that it depends really the way that you wake up and the way that you go to sleep has a huge effect on our system as women. We're so sensitive to everything, to the external stimulus. So the more you can tune into yourself and, you know, take responsibility for your choices of how you want to go to sleep and wake up and will really set a, a certain tone for how your hormones will respond. So I think creating a game plan for that is a really important place to start relating to yourself differently. Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this week's guest. If you did, please leave a comment and subscribe. Let your friends know and share this podcast on social media. If you have any questions or you'd like to work with me privately or you just want more information, please head over to mysticalmotherhood.com. The Mystical Motherhood book is a guidebook for fertility, conscious conception, pregnancy, birth, and into the early childhood years, and it's available on Amazon. I look forward to having you back next week.